A mixture of green, dark gray, and thick brown. The color of water in Uganda reflects the stunning report by WaterAid that 8 million people in the country have no access to safe water and over 8,000 children die every year due to waterborne disease. This is a shocking figure because Uganda's excellent location gives this country a very high access to water. It has a coastline on the biggest lake in Africa, Lake Victoria, the source of the River Nile, and a vast network of underground water. The Lonely Planet ranked Uganda as the best tourism spot for 2012, but it seems that gorilla trekking and safaris are not enough to stop a full-scale water pollution crisis. I am in the capital city of Kampala to investigate this phenomenon, and my journey takes me to a fishing village in the outskirts of the capital, where local people use Lake Victoria as both a food and a water source. However, this has been increasingly hard in the past few years due to vast amounts of water pollution. I'm here in Luzir, one of Kampala's suburbs, right on the shore of Lake Victoria. And you can see behind me something hardly unexpected, uh, right next to a huge water source, that's the local fish market. Now, the fish hasn't come yet, but if you come closer to the water with me, you're going to see that the once clean and pure waters of the lake have turned into a dark green, gooey swamp. Not only is it harder to fish and impossible for the locals to fetch safe water from the lake now, but the biochemical environment that has been created is drawn in malaria spreading mosquitoes. Older people in Uganda grow up to be immune against this disease, but children are particularly vulnerable. This is Nanya Jumadina, who was born here. She told me about the severity of the insect infestation. They bring malaria diseases so that you can see me, I'm sick. People have some help, the situation to come away. And I don't know how government can help us. With little to no medical help coming this way, Nanu Jumadina doesn't know if this disease will kill her. And she's not the only one. With its rapid population growth, Uganda is one of the youngest nations in the world. Over 50% of close to 40 million people are under the age of 14. And while there is less risk of disease during the dry season, the months of intensive rain from March to July and October to December bring yearly epidemics of yellow fever, typhoid fever, and hepatitis A. They are all extremely deadly. Water pollution is not helping in this hostile environment, and poor sanitation threatens the stability of lakes to be used as a food source. This country has an extremely low yearly income per capita, less than $700, and for most of the people here, fishing is the only way to survive. But how did it come to this? Water pollution of this scale doesn't happen overnight. So I go to Uganda's National Association of Professional Environmentalists to find answers to this overwhelming crisis. Established in 1997, Napa has since fought the growing water pollution crisis, as well as lobbying for sustainable use of Uganda's natural resources by being involved in numerous projects. Frank Muramuzi is the creative director of the organization. He has previously been imprisoned for his activities, but still actively campaigns for the preservation of Uganda's environment. You know what is happening, first of all, um, in Uganda, we have a problem of water. And um, most of the water is polluted. People build along the water uh, sources, if it is a river, if it is a pond, if it is a, a lake. And um, all the activities that come as a result of those settlements end up in the water. We are talking about to uh, uh, human feces, we are talking about uh, agriculture when people are um, cultivating, we are talking about uh, dumping, uh, all of those end up into the water. There's a reason for people settling around water sources. First of all, they were not polluted when the first settlers started building their villages, so they had easy access to water. Secondly, land around wetlands is very cheap and affordable for people looking to find work in the city. However, during the wet season, wetlands stop water from the heavy rainfall from draining, which leads to massive floods and epidemics of waterborne diseases. And with heavy congestion in Kampala, the situation is getting worse every year. Geoffrey Kamese is the project manager of Nape. He tells me the story behind one of the drainage channels that were built in Kampala, the Nakivubo. 
There is a channel uh, that uh, drains into uh, Lake Victoria and this channel is commonly known uh, as Nakivo Channel. This channel uh, was uh, enlarged with the help of funding from the World Bank and uh, uh, the purpose was to drain as much water as possible from the city into Lake Victoria. The unfortunate thing is that the channel drains into the lake uh, water that is very contaminated, uh, water that is not treated, uh, water that has been uh, coming from industry and uh, domestic uh, sewage. But if it's such a massive polluter, why build the channel in the first place? Is it a balance between two evils? As it turns out, expectations during the building process did not meet reality. Traditionally, water entering Lake Victoria was naturally filtered by the wetlands that were surrounding the lake. But what has happened, all the wetlands have been cleared by so-called investors. Those have established hotels, those have established flower gardens, those who have settled there, and that is not a good thing. In reality, most of the water that we use in the city comes from Lake Victoria. And if Lake Victoria is polluted, then our livelihoods are affected. A reasonable suggestion would be to try and move people away from the wetlands. However, there has been a staggering report that as of this year, 40% of the people of Kampala live on wetlands. Another problem in the city is poor waste disposal management. This is also heavily compromising the ability of the wetlands to filter water. Kampala City's poor produce over 100,000 tons of thrash per day, but only 50% of it is properly disposed of. Now, the heap of thrash behind me is a perfect example of the other 50% that isn't disposed of. You can see some goats feasting on the waste, some birds eating, and uh, the village that I'm in is right next to the Nakivubo, so it's no surprise that some of the waste ends up in the channel and consecutively in Lake Victoria. But why are there piles of thrash in the middle of a village in the first place? Is there a possible solution to this pressing issue, or is it too late now? Jennifer Bakiawa is a health journalist working in Uganda for some years. She believes that the first and main reason for the waste problem are people. If you get garbage and you dump it in the drainage and you clog the drainage, how do you expect the water to flow? Common knowledge, common, common sense, I should say. We should punish people who dump. Go to people's pockets. It hurts. Although finding people is a solution, it doesn't look like it would solve the problem in the long run, and it can't fix the damage already done to the water sources here. And while the government of Uganda does invest in alternative water sources like wells, they are under criticism that the money for water wells doesn't always go where it's supposed to. We should quantify corruption, not in terms of how many millions were stolen, but in how many lives have been affected. If money was meant to build a well, for 50,000 people and it wasn't built and as a result in that community so many people got water-related diseases then the person should be charged for crimes against humanity. So what is left for the poor of Uganda so they can survive? Health education is at different levels. The ministry can do it, the Ministry of Health can do it. Of course, it's very expensive going from one area to another. Non-government organizations working in slum areas, they can partner with the local, local leaders to do the health education. Then they also peer-to-peer -peer education. Boil the water you're going to drink, wash your utensils with soap. That is the message we have to drive home because not all of them can afford tap water, not all of them can afford vaccines, but at least they can afford a piece of soap. Education seems to be the only logical step that may solve the water pollution crisis here. But although recent figures show a high rise in education, children in the poor areas are still not going to school, either because it's too expensive or because they help their families with everyday work. But without education, the situation is going to get worse and eventually it might reach the point of no return. All in all, it would seem that there are solutions to the water crisis here in Uganda. However, they are either very expensive or impossible to apply due to human error, sewage, and sometimes even capital investments. Winston Churchill once called this country the Pearl of Africa, and I believe that you can see why. But right now, it seems that this Pearl of Africa has sunk deep 
under Lady Victoria's green, dark grey waters. <laughs>